If you're looking for a stopover campground in southern Utah, the KOA and Hurricane might be the answer, but it's not perfect. So this is going to be an interesting video today because no campground is perfect. There's definitely some not so good things about the KOA hurricane, but I think it's worth you kind of adding it to your list of places to check out because there really is a lot of pluses and good reasons to stay here despite some of the things that are not so good. Or you may hear about some of the things that are not so good and be like, I'm out of here. And that's okay. This video will help you choose not to choose this campground, right? Because it's probably not a place that you'll want to spend a week or two, but a lot of people have asked, okay, I want to know of a good stopover campground with lots to do and that's easy in, easy out. So let's talk about the cons of the KOA hurricane right away. So it is on the interstate, which actually can be a plus for in and out, but also you can hear the interstate a good bit. Also, the sights are really narrow. And if you have a big rig, although it says it's big rig friendly, it is pretty tight as far as having site space. But I think the campground has a lot going for it. Number one, the area. So we're in southern Utah. We're 17 miles north of St. George. St. George is considered one of the top 10 places to retire in the country. So there's lots of things to do in the area like shopping and golf and water sports, that sort of thing. And you're only 33 miles from Zion. Campgrounds near Zion National Park can fill up for miles. So 33 miles away is not that bad. Now right around the corner from this campground is a lake. It's called Quail Creek State Park. It's a beautiful lake. It's honestly, I'm looking at a hill. It's just on the other side of a hill. It's less than two miles from this KOA. It's a beautiful lake. You can boat on it or just look at the water. It's really pretty. Now, even closer than that is the Red Cliffs Recreation Area. You actually see it over my shoulder. I went running there yesterday. I've driven through there. It's beautiful. So there's hiking trails as well as mountain biking and fat tire biking trails. It reminds me of Sedona. It's just gorgeous. I mean, as you can see, we are in the beautiful Utah desert. There's a lot of pretty stuff here and there's even ghost towns. There is a ghost town called Harrisburg nearby and you can see some ruins some houses of what used to be here back in the 1800s. So yes, if you stay here for a night or two, you'll find there's plenty to do. And there is a lot to do right in the campground. The KOA Hurricane has 123 sites. Most are pull through. There are also cabins and tent sites. So if you've been driving all day and just wanna relax, know that there's a pool, there's horseshoes, pickleball, mini golf, shuffleboard, there's a clubhouse with billiards. So there's a lot to do right here. Now, another thing that could be seen as a negative is that the sites here at the KOA are buddy sites. What that means is that when you step out of your door, you are facing your neighbor's door. So every other site faces every other direction. If you're traveling with a buddy, that's awesome. You guys can camp together and socialize. If you're not, it may make you a little uncomfortable. For me, it's just not a big deal and I like to meet people. So another downside of this campground is that there is not really good cell service. If I just go a half mile, I have great cell service. If you have Starlink, you will have wonderful service here. It's another reason to have Starlink if you're on the road a lot, particularly if you are in places with big open skies like Southern Utah has. Now I have been on the road for almost four years and a continuing problem is how do I get mail? I get it sent to America's mailbox, but then I need to get it forwarded to me or I need to order off Amazon and I need to have an address. Many campgrounds are not so willing to get your mail. That's another reason why I like the KOA hurricane is I can get my mail here. If you're a full timer, you know that that means a lot. So I ended up staying here for two weeks. I never ran out of things to do. The campground is clean, well run, and the staff are so nice. I enjoyed my time here and will definitely be back. So who is this campground for? Well, I have to say, if you're traveling from Denver to LA, or if you're going from Salt Lake City to Vegas, this is a nice stopover. I would definitely recommend you stay here a night or two. There's so much to do, 
but who is this campground not for? It's definitely not for someone who has very low tolerance of interstate noise. You can definitely hear that and also the really tight sights. Now for traveling across the country, you know, I've been on the road for so long that these things don't bother me in the big picture, but I want to be honest with you that it's not perfect. So if you can handle that for a night or two, then the KOA hurricanes for you. If not, then I would look elsewhere for something with bigger sites that's quieter. Now the Red Cliff Recreation Area across the street does have a campground. It's far from the interstate, so it's quiet. And there's also several pull through sites that can handle big rigs. But there are a couple things to note. Number one, there's water, but no electric. Number two, the campground is directly on the main loop. So anyone coming into the recreation area, they're likely gonna drive the whole loop because it's one way. So they're gonna be driving right by your site. Okay, here we go. You know, it is not my intention, it has never been my intention to make this the drama channel, but at the same time, I wanna honor you if you've been with Paul and I for the last, you know, almost three years. You've been with us through thick and thin, through the gas station incident, the back surgery. So I, I wanna honor that. I wanna honor the time that you spent with Paul and I and let you know that yes, we did break up. <sighs> Paul sent me a meme today that was really great. It said something like, life can give you some challenges and you it can either make you bitter or make you better. And that's what I'm focusing on is really, you know, having this make me better and make him better. So you may have seen a couple videos that we've since taken down where we broke up and then we got back together. We really tried our best but we just could not make it work. I really appreciate the time that Paul and I had together. My gosh, we went through the pandemic together. We were both solo RVers for a year before we met. We met in November 19 and right before the pandemic, it was so great to have somebody to share that with and to share just the trials and you know of life in the last almost three years. So, now, I know that a lot of you want to keep in touch with Paul. He is thinking about starting a channel. The best way to stay in the loop with that is to ring the bell. If you ring the bell, you'll get an alert when I post on the community page. So once his channel is up and running, and of course it's gonna be about cars and car shows and car museums and that kind of thing, then I will post on the community page a notification. So ring the bell and you'll get that. I'm gonna keep on with the channel. I'm gonna keep bringing you the good and the bad of RV life and to give you tips and serve you in any way that I can to help you, to help make RV life easier for you. And if you see me in a campground, don't be afraid to say hello and reach out. And the same thing with Paul, you'll probably see him in a campground, so don't be afraid to walk up and say hello too. Thank you again for your love and support and I'll see you in the next video.